Hands. Tight eye left. Tight end off. Brother, get ready to beat the mic back. Tight eye right. Strong right. Come on, Dino. Let's go. Let's go. Back 77. Hook one. Hook two. Spread left slot, spread left slot, dash right, 75 on red. Ready? Watch the break! Watch the break! Jack, Jack, Jack! That's a holding! Yeah, there it is, right there! Excellent, excellent job! Excellent job. Now listen, great thing about football is every week you get a chance to redeem yourselves, all right? right? No matter what happens out there, every play is a ball game. Everybody's got to go. Few roads in America are as fabled as the one leading to pro football's promised land. The road to Palo Alto and Super Bowl 19 was shaped and contoured by the men who traveled it. And even those who would never reach Stanford Stadium left resounding footsteps along the way. Desire and determination enabled players like Houston's Larry Moriarty to run past the dead ends and detour signs encountered by the lowly teams they played for. The trip drew its unique identity from hard runners and from hang gliders such as Seattle receiver Steve Largent. The travelers also included a congressman's son and an Olympic gold medalist. Phil Simms helped the New York Giants navigate their way into the playoffs. Spectacular efforts defined a season in which every player sought a place in the sun. There were bright horizons for teams like the Pittsburgh Steelers, who earned a surprise trip to the AFC Championship game. The road to Super Bowl 19. It was glorious for some, hazardous for many. Luther back to pass, quick pop over the middle of the slant. This time he gets it, Manny break free, he's going to score! That's Duckworth, he's to the 15, the 10, the 5, he lost the ball! He lost the ball! Richardson recovers! The Bears get it back! He looked like he just gave it up, he flipped it right over his shoulder! I thought he was laddling the ball, I don't know what he was doing. The Bears recover at the four-yard line on that bizarre turn of events. The toss to Brown. Comes up fighting four yards, and he is going to have the first down. It's fumbled, and then it's flipped back to Kyle. It's intercepted. It is taken into the end zone for a touchdown by Gil Bird. The Vikings try the gadget play, and it comes up and hits him in the face. Those that charted an unconventional course to Super Bowl 19 wound up spinning their wheels in frustration. But there were moments when improvisation became a source of high-octane energy for teams accustomed to running on empty. Dickey goes straight back in the pocket. Dickey looks, he wants to throw deep to Lofton. He already will never get out of bounds. Now he's got the touchdown. 
The road markers on the way to Palo Alto were often confusing. More than a few got their signals crossed when seeking the proper direction. Hey, who cares? I gotta go make another touchdown. Richard, what are you doing? Come on, man, let's go. Some players found that the biggest obstacle to a successful journey was the man wearing the same uniform. Every road has its stragglers and vagabonds. The road to Super Bowl 19 was no different. On its path, many teams were rudely cast by the wayside. In New Orleans, the hangdog expression worn by the Saints mascot tells the story of a team that failed to post a winning record for the 18th year in a row. Meanwhile, Tom Landry put his best squad ever on the field. Unfortunately, it was comprised of players elected to Dallas's silver anniversary team. Another perennial contender, the Los Angeles Raiders, drew on their tough guy image and a hell-raising defense to earn a wild card playoff berth. But in postseason play, Seattle gave the Raiders a bitter taste of their own medicine. While the Raiders faltered near the goalpost, in Anaheim, the goalpost faltered near the Rams. The goalpost fell there. Well, I'll be done. The goalpost to our left <laughs> has blown over. So there's an NFL first, I think. Bob, well, it's early in this NFL season for the 84 campaign, but we've seen quite a bit this year, haven't we? <laughs> we have seen some unusual things, indeed. Though end zone celebrations were often out of sync, the pilgrimage to Palo Alto included a full complement of fancy dancers. An avalanche of emotion made for a spirited trip. And also making it special were the congratulations offered to history's number one rusher from the nation's number one citizen. Thank you. Congratulations again. Well, thank you, and give my best to Nancy. <laughs> Everyone had a chance to be a hero on the road to the Super Bowl, but only a few wore the true look of a champion. I don't know how much fun you guys are going to have, but I'm fixing to have a ball myself. Got a little butterflies? If you don't, work them up. You ought to have just a little bit of butterflies, just a little bit of shake. And you get out there, stretch those joints a little bit, and kick their butts all over the field. Guy in front of you makes a play, you're glad for him. The guy next to you makes a catch, you're blocking for him. The guy around you is fixing to make a sack, you nail him right after he does make that sack. On the road to Super Bowl 19, the Cincinnati Bengals broke down in the driveway, losing their opening game to the Broncos. We can still win this thing with a lot, a lot of wins to come. We'll look at this one and we'll we'll learn a lot from it. We'll be okay. Keep your heads up, fellas. You didn't uh, didn't get get knocked out of the playoffs. You just lost a ball game. And we're not going to lose a lot of them. The Bengals lost five straight games and seemed like a doomed army on a survival mission. They played hard, but in every way a team could be measured, they came up short. The Bengals made mistakes, many mistakes, 
But one mistake they never made was surrender. Uh, if you were going to war and you had to have somebody in the foxhole with you, you would pick from this group because they cover their flanks, they never give up, they keep ro reloading their guns, and uh, when, regardless of the odds, this team thinks they're going to win. Trailing the division leading Steelers by four games at midseason, the Bengals went from a joke to a juggernaut. While the Bengals took a firm grip on the steering wheel, the Indianapolis Colts ran Pittsburgh off the road to Super Bowl 19. Nagel rolls away from the pressure. He comes back right, looks, looks down the field. He's looking for some help, throws it over the middle, and he is caught! It might be a touchdown! The immaculate reception! He scores! Oh. He was up the With the Steelers staggering like a fighter on Dream Street, the Bengals' hopes for a title became a reality. So Boomer running around to the right. Look, throws into the end zone to Anthony Munoz. Touchdown. No team ever looked so dead in September and so alive in December. The last time a team started so poorly and made the playoffs was the 1970 Bengals. And one of their quarterbacks was Sam White. Once again, eyes shone brighter and hope shimmered anew. For a Steeler loss coupled with a Bengal victory in the final week, guaranteed a Central Division title. Just protect that ball. You know, when you're in a ball game, you're gonna just gonna be the third, fourth guy that hitch is gonna take you down. So you gotta be protecting the football. Okay. And the best game you ever played right now. You know how we go into every football game? You play physical. The first snap has to be that. Play loose. You win this game, you're gonna be a champion. You're going to be the Central Division champions. Play loose, play physical, and play smart. No mistakes, no cheap shots, no recoils. If someone gives you one, we're going to play a smart football game. Now, it was a long time ago that we opened the season, and we finished it by talking about how far we had to go and how big the mountain was. You're right at the summit. Get that friggin' team fired up. You're playing, you know, you're playing tight what you're playing. You're not playing soft. You're playing tense. Come on, Rick! Keep your poise out there! Safety. ML Harrison, the outside goes in motion. Anderson back to throw against the Blues. End zone, touchdown, Collinsworth. You remember? You remember uh, cramps at Wilmington? You remember stomping the roaches? You remember the whole thing and all the way through from Denver to Kansas City in 05, and you're dead, and it's history, and it's over. And I really believe you're going to be the AFC Central Champions, and that's the start of it. Okay. Now we had to win, and we've got to rely on uh, on the Raiders, and, and hope they got a big game coming up here. Has anybody heard an early, early score? Yeah. <laughs> what? The Steelers must win to take the title in the AFC Central. If they lose it, Cincinnati's in. Come on, Jimbo. Come on, Jimbo. Come on, Jimbo. This one is still very much up for grabs. Big play of the game right here. Possible the Bengals' road to Super Bowl 19 ended abruptly, but winter is never cold for those with warm memories. That's it. Don Meredith was here. He'd be singing the party. All right. And in 35 seconds. I think that's why we didn't invite him. <laughs> The road to Super Bowl 19 cut through a landscape filled with peaks of individual brilliance. Score tied at 21. Marino back to throw. He sets. Fires the middle. Clayton's got it. 50, 45. He may go. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Miami. Clayton has the new record. That's 18 touchdown receptions in a season. He is the all-time record holder. 
Dickerson picks up about nine yards on the play and a brand new single season rushing record for the outstanding star from Southern Methodist. Art Monk has just broken the National Football League record for reception in a single season. The That's crowd the is on its feet. They should be. What a great record to break and a well-deserved honor for Art Monk. Now Charlie Joyner is the all-time leading receiver in the history of the National Football League. That's number 37, and he's through it to Jimmy Cephalo. Marino will get the football, and he has thrown his 37th touchdown pass of the season. That's a new record. In 1984, Dan Marino of the Miami Dolphins completed more passes in one season for more yards and more touchdowns than any quarterback in history. Unlike Marino, San Diego's Charlie Joyner has always been just a member of the supporting cast, never a leading man. But this year, after 16 seasons in the league, he finally saw his name in lights as he became the NFL's all-time leading pass receiver. While San Diego had a silver screen hero, Los Angeles featured a solid gold dancer. Eric Dickerson, number 29, set a winning tempo for the Rams, and the 2,105 yards he gained rushing were the most ever in a single season. Where Eric Dickerson is going, Walter Payton has already been. Since this country transformed rugby into football more than a hundred years ago, no man has carried the ball as often or as far as Walter Payton. In his 10-year career, he has missed only one game. And the only thing greater than his talent is his heart, his unquestioned obedience to the God of guts. As Peyton puts it, there's a voice inside me saying, you can always do better. To know the power of that voice is to see Walter Peyton battle through a broken field. On the road to Super Bowl 19, Peyton led the Bears to the division championship, and along the way, kept an appointment with destiny. Quick pitch to Walter, looking for the record, cuts back, he's got it, he's out of it at 25 to the 26 yard line, Walter Payton becomes the National Football League all time, leading rusher surpassing Jim Brown, and that's the equivalent to Hank Aaron breaking Babe Ruth's all time home run record, and listen to the standing ovation. Payton's remarkable record was equaled only by the spirit in which it was achieved. The motivating drive for me has been for the athletes that have tried, but yet and still have failed to reach that certain achievement. And also the athletes that, uh, that didn't get an opportunity to, like the Overstreets and the Delaney's and the Brian Piccolo's. You know, this simplifies what the game is made of. And what I did out there today is a reflection of those guys because they made the sacrifices as well. And it's a tribute to me to bestow this honor upon them. Thank you. Walter Payton, a proud member of a unique fraternity of fighting men and a player who has always traveled the paths of glory. Hey, we can't even hear the 
the snap count. On the road to Super Bowl 19, no team experienced more peaks and valleys of emotion than Jim Hannafin and his St. Louis Cardinals. 35, 35. I thought that was against the rules. Put that wave up there in the crowd. There, huh? Let's get a penalty on a. Many Perrin will hold as O'Donoghue will try and win it for the Cardinals. Hannafin's Cardinals became the NFC's birds of prey. After years of nesting with losers and also rans, the 84 Cardinals soared toward the playoffs. Quarterback Neil Lomax and wide receiver Roy Green helped realign the balance of power in the NFC East, scoring with big offensive bursts and setting up kicker Neil O'Donohue's 11th hour heroics. We wait the snap. Come on, Neil, it's baby. Good. The kick. It is. During the month of October, St. Louis went undefeated, knocking off their key rivals and climbing to the top of the NFC Eastern Division. And a growing consensus believed that when the season was over, Hannafin's high-flying young team would still be on top. Oh, I don't know about that. No, we've got to, we've got to play better. I think the thing that's good is that I think we're capable of playing better. Mitchell's in the backfield. The blitz is on. Here's the pass. Long down the middle. End zone. Touchdown. touchdown. But there's a flag down, and they're not going to give him the touchdown. I don't think so. There's a penalty flag thrown oh, on the touchdown pass caught by Green. They're going to call offensive interference. In the chill of November, Hannafin's Cardinals flew south. Three straight losses brought the birds to within 13 seconds of playoff extinction. The snap is high, Perrin gets it down. The kick is long, oh, yeah. it's good. It's good! With eight seconds left, O'Donoghue puts the Cardinals on top by a point. 17-16. The Cardinals needed to win all three of their remaining games to make the playoffs and the New England Patriots were their first victims. Huh? Yeah. That was sweet. Oh, that was sweet. Come back. Nice, baby. Yeah. Next up, the division-leading New York Giants. Steps up, throws, and it's caught inside the 30, Mitchell 20. Now only one small obstacle stood between St. Louis and the division title. And as usual, St. Louis would have to come from behind in the second half to win. Six twenty Redskins. Back goes Lomax to pass. Locks it up into the end zone. Got Green wide open. Touchdown, St. Louis Cardinals. For one brief moment, Hannafin's team had the lead. But in this roller coaster Cardinal season, one more peak and one more valley remained. It's good! With one minute, 33 seconds left to go in the game, Mark Mosley has given the Redskins the lead back. It is Washington 29 to 27. It was do or die, and the season was on the line. At the 20, 31 yard line, he's pulled out. He's short of the first down. They got to get the clock stopped. The clock is stop moving. The clock. Cardinals are out of timeout. They got to kick the field goal. They're going to try the field goal. It'll be a 50 yard kick. They're not going to get it on the yard line. Six seconds. Five, four. Here's the snap.
snap, a little low. O'Donohue gets the kick away. It's, it's up in the air. No! The Redskins win the NFC Eastern Division title. For 26 teams, the road to Super Bowl 19 proved to be a dead end. For some, pride and self-respect were the season's only rewards. Uh, I'll tell you something about this football team. Uh, we all are in it together, and uh, there are many other players that could have uh, taken care of that game for us, too. The thing that I'll always remember is the way they fought back. It doesn't matter how much money you had, you couldn't buy my job. There's only 28 people in the world that have my job. And you're just one of 28 football coaches trying to survive uh, in, a, in, to me, the most competitive situation in, in America today. Big game, big game, they're all big. Come out there from the get-go, let's get the job done, let's fly around, have fun, cut and shoot, do what we have to, let's get it done. Don't, don't push your foot around, just don't hesitate. Just take it. Am I correct in saying this now? Emmett, Rod, yeah, Emmett, yeah. Rod. Hey, Emmett, Rod. I think the most frustrating thing is the fact that there are some things that you have no control over. Just none whatsoever. Hey, Daniels, what the hell are you doing out there? You gotta run up the goddamn football field. Don't dance around. That's horrible. I could get some girl to do that. Those girls on the sidelines can dance. I love the game. I get excited. That's what I enjoy about it. I could not sit. When a player makes a mistake, I feel it in here. Come here! Come here. Who's sending him in there? Let's tackle his ass. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, God. Rick. At some point, you're going to have to come down hard on somebody. At some point, you're going to have to say, that's it. We're not doing it that way. Or we're not going to do it that way anymore. Or if you do that again, Schmatz or Jones or whatever your name is, it's going to cost you. Remember what I always talk about on the days we win, the days we don't win? What kind of language? And how do we act on the days we don't play well? Just like this. Right there. Guys complaining and griping and just play football and play the best we can. It always works that way. I mean, you fight as hard as you can to keep your head above water. You fight for survival, and that's what we're trying to do. We're just fighting for survival, every coach in the league. Let me and tell me that ball was a catchable ball. Pardon me? Tell me that was a catchable ball. I won't ball. tell you anything because I wasn't even watching play. I had a man in this zone. It, it had to been an Olympic triple gold medal winner to catch that thing. Hey, that's illegal. You're wrong. Hey, you are wrong. And that's when you want to crawl into that fetal position and put the blankets over your head and just hide. Dale, I warned you guys to look for that. There were 13 guys. We counted them. Boy, how can you make a mistake? I'm going to quit trying to help. Douglas MacArthur said uh, one time, don't ever give a command that can be understood. Always give commands that cannot be misunderstood. Panther 28B, Panther on set. Panther, Panther. Double left, 26. We've got to get the first down. We've got to get the first down. That's not what we call This is not an exact science. Uh, football. Hey, lay on them and don't let them get up too fast. Problem with coaches are they don't know what they want to be when they grow up. He'll cut it back. He'll make a 20 out of it. Oh man, I'm dying. I'm dying, baby. Give me a first down, I'll relax. I don't know what I'd do if I had to live with the fact that I didn't get the job done. Hey, we played already three and a half quarters, three and two thirds quarters. We'll just take our licking. The fear of losing is haunting you right to the time the ga game ends. The emotions and the feelings that you get from losing probably stick with you longer than the joy of winning. Winning is the key, and if you don't win, then uh, sooner or later you're going to have to find a job. You know? <laughs> I ain't but two kinds. Them that's been fired and them that's going to get fired, and I've been both. And we work in the most precarious situation uh, probably in our society today. It doesn't make sense. Sometimes even winning was not enough. I think it's in a tough way to make a living. The Patriots' Ron Meyer became the first coach in NFL history to be fired at mid-season with a winning record. The pitfalls of the coaching profession made the road to the Super Bowl even more demanding. Let's go. Let's go. The road to Super Bowl 19 was a wide-open expressway paved with offense. However, a few still trudged along the old back road to a title. 
and mounted their championship drive on a dirt road of defense. Dominant defense. In 1984, aggressive play was the rule, not the exception. Defenses focused their attack on the quarterback as the pass rush became their greatest weapon. Offenses were shattered by blitzing defenders who left quarterbacks stripped of their senses and the football. In Seattle, coach Chuck Knox and the Seahawks overcame an injury to star runner Kurt Warner thanks to an intimidating defense. The Seahawks led the NFL with 63 takeaways and eight times they turned these thefts into touchdowns. Seattle's motto was simple. The football is not the property of the man carrying it at the start of the play. It is the property of the man holding it at the finish. This same belief was shared by a Western Division rival in Denver. The Broncos were second only to Seattle in takeaways. And led by veteran linebacker Tom Jackson, number 57, Denver's defense could bury an opponent like a Rocky Mountain blizzard. On a Monday night in October, Bronco head coach Dan Reeves elected to kick off so his defense could set the tempo. Start off right on this guy. Right now. This guy's not looking for pressure. Run deal, Steeler double zone. Ready? Don't jump! Tango! No! On the game's first two plays from scrimmage, the Broncos turned two Green Bay Packer fumbles into touchdowns. 37 seconds is 14 and up. Good. Let's get one more. Do it again. This was a contest defense had to win, and Denver's did. On the regular season finale, the Broncos and the Seahawks collided in the Kingdome on the road to Super Bowl XIX. Denver beat Seattle at their own game, turnovers, and won the championship of the AFC West. Defense also won the championship in the NFC Central. Walter Payton is the heart of the Chicago Bears. But defense has always been its soul. The legendary Monsters of the Midway awoke from a 20-year sleep and savaged the NFL with a record 72 quarterback sacks and won the division championship for fiery head coach Mike Ditka. Ditka revived Chicago's tradition of toughness and in the playoffs, the Washington Redskins were no match for the NFL's top-ranked defense. Play as hard as you can on every play. Anybody can affect the outcome of this game. Let's make sure we do our best at all times. Be smart and let's go after them. Yellow 41! Yellow 41! Touch him! 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 The 
Bears' 23-19 victory was their first playoff win since 1963. And it proved that in an age of offense, you can still win with defense. No team cast a more imposing shadow over the road to the Super Bowl than the San Francisco 49ers. They were led by Joe Montana, the NFC's top-rated quarterback. Montana was San Francisco's one genuine superstar, but the 49ers boasted a unique team chemistry that produced a volatile game plan. A high-flying aerial attack was complemented by a productive running game that enabled the 49ers to navigate the twists and turns of enemy territory. Fueled by such a well-balanced offense, the 49ers cruised to an unprecedented 15-1 regular season record. Despite his team's success, head coach Bill Walsh brooded on the sidelines all season long as if he were delivering Hamlet's soliloquy into his headset. But the 49ers made opponents suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. No team in the NFL allowed fewer points, yet their defensive efforts earned scant notoriety. But in postseason play, the New York Giants learned the hard way that trying to move the ball downfield against San Francisco was a perilous endeavor. The flow of New York's offense was reduced to a mere trickle. In a 21-10 win, the 49ers' defense made it impossible for the Giants to keep pace with a trio of Montana touchdown passes. Then in the NFC Championship game, San Francisco's defenders devastated the Chicago Bears. Set the tempo for the World Championship, guys! Let's go! Let's go! Wedge out of there right now! Let's go! go. <laughs> San Francisco posted a 23 to nothing victory. Calling the signals is Montana. As Solomon goes wide right, the handoff is given to Tyler. Breaks a tackle, past the three, the two, the one. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. Here's Montana rolling out of the right side, looking toward the end zone. Now throwing, fires. It's caught by Solomon. Touchdown for the 49ers. The 49ers were now on a collision course with the Miami Dolphins. Winners of the AFC Championship game. All right, let's come with it. We're going wedge on the ball. All right, let's and then we let's go, go to now. work on offense, defense all day long. Let's beat them every throw. Let's go. Come on. The Pittsburgh Steelers traveled a rocky road to the AFC Championship game in Miami. But in a pair of season ending wins, they had run roughshod over the Raiders and the Broncos. faces reflected the subtlety of their methods. <laughs> Pittsburgh had thundered along the road to the Super Bowl, but with the end in sight, they were struck down by lightning. Dan Marino, the NFL Player of the Year, shattered the Steelers with four touchdown passes. Second and five for the 41. Again out of the shotgun. Marino, deep drop, throwing deep upfield. Down the near side, man open. Touchdown for the Dolphins. It is caught by Mark Dober.
28 teams had set out on the road to the Super Bowl. For Pittsburgh and Chicago, the trip was over. Now, only two remained. He looks, lost to the corner of the end zone, that for a touchdown. That's four touchdowns in the ball game, and that's a new record. For the San Francisco 49ers, for the Miami Dolphins, there is one more horizon to conquer. Beyond it lies pro football's promised land. Super Bowl 19 promised a larger than life battle between two towering teams. And both the Miami Dolphins and San Francisco 49ers inaugurated Super Sunday with the same high-flying flair they had displayed during their journey to Palo Alto. Joe Montana's first period scoring pass to Carl Monroe, number 32, climaxed a 78-yard drive that provided the 49ers with a 7-3 lead. Dan Marino responded by directing the Dolphins downfield without calling a huddle, a ploy that prevented San Francisco from sending in its pass defense specialist. No huddle offense. They come up the line of scrimmage quickly again. San Francisco cannot adjust its defense. Marino rolls to his right, flips to the corner of the end zone, complete the Dan Johnson for a touchdown. Just bing, 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 down the field in that two-minute offense. But in the second quarter, the 49ers' unique combination of force and finesse enabled them to score three unanswered touchdowns on successive drives. Back to pass, Montana fires. It's caught there by Craig, gets it and goes in for a touchdown. Roger Craig taking the pass from Joe Montana. Good for the score, and the Niners are back on top. Montana drops back, short drop, fakes once. He's going to run it himself. He's in at the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers! A handoff given to Craig. Craig batters his way to the goal line. He goes in for a 49er touchdown. And the Miami defense just cannot cope with the 49ers now. Now forced to play catch up, the Dolphins fell victim to San Francisco's hard charging pass rush. The 49ers' ferocious foot soldiers trampled Marino's protection and pressured a young quarterback normally accustomed to security. <laughs> But as those precious half-seconds ticked away, San Francisco's defense tightened its stranglehold on the Dolphins. Miami was held scoreless in the second half, and what had started as a battle became a blowout. The 49ers had rung down the curtain on Marino's season-long magic act, and while the San Francisco secondary cast a shadow over Miami's receivers, the specter of Joe Montana continued to loom large over Don Shula's deflated defense. Montana's record-setting rushing and passing yardage totals earned him game MVP honors and led the 49ers to a 38-16 victory. It's six, oh, it's six. Going back to pass on third and ten, Montana. Looks over the left side, caught by Craig on the way to the end zone, and Craig goes in for the score. It's all over. Super Bowl 19 is in the record books. The 49ers have won it. San Francisco's triumph was a tribute to total team effort. And in Super Bowl 19, the talents of 49 mighty men captured pro football's most magical moment.